Hi, everybody. Welcome to Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo. Our television studio has moved to a new location. As you can see, it's kind of more of an open format. On today's show, Vision Assist, we're going to be talking about makeup tips. Then after that, chiropractor Dr. Joe DeMarco is back. Yay. He is going to be showing us some strength training exercises. So maybe he can show us an exercise to get rid of those, you know, underarm jigglies. You know how like when you're waving at somebody and you stop waving, but your arm keeps going. <laughs> so looking forward to that. Um, then finally, we're going to be giving some tips on how to get a good night's sleep. So let's go right over to Vision Assist. You know, if you have low vision or no vision, applying makeup can be pretty challenging. So here's some tips and hopefully they'll help you out. Watch this. So today we're talking about lipstick application. And the best tip I can give you is keep your lip products in the refrigerator. That way, when you go to use them, if you can't see where they're going, you can feel where they're going. Um, it really helps. Uh, there's many different types of lipstick these days. There's your average creamy style lipstick. Then these I really like. This is a much slimmer style. Um, and what I like about this is it's a much smaller tip and it's angled. So it's much easier to be precise with these style lipsticks. So I really like these. These are my favorites. Uh, there's also lip stain. Um, and lip stain is a liquid. I mean, it's the consistency of water. I don't know if you can see this, but it's in the shape of a wine bottle. It's really cute. Uh, so as I said, lip stains are a liquid. So when you go to use the lip stain, you want to make sure with the sponge applicator at the end, you really squeeze it at the top to get off any excess so it doesn't drip all over the place. Um, these lip stains are wonderful because they stay on for a long, long time. Um, but they are drying to your lips. So if you want to use a lip stain, um, you want to put on, you know, a little maybe gloss or chapstick or Vaseline, just something to moisturize your lips. Um, this particular uh, lip stain has a sponge applicator. They do come with brushes for, for application, but I, the sponge is much, much easier to use. So if you're going to go the lip stain route, just remember to put some moisture um, on top of it and just reapply the gloss or whatever you're using throughout the day. Um, so there's many steps to applying lipstick. So you can use uh, some of these steps or you can use all of these steps. Number one, you want to exfoliate your lips. Um, you can buy a lip exfoliator at the store. Um, you can make your own. You could mix a little coconut oil with a little granulated sugar or you could mix olive oil and sugar. Um, and then you just apply it to your lips, massage it in, leave it on for a couple of seconds, and just take a damp washcloth and wash it off. Um, if you're really desperate, you can always just take a damp washcloth and go over your lips uh, a few times. You just want to get rid of all that dead skin. So the next thing you want to do is moisturize your lips. So what I do is I just use whatever moisturizer I'm using on my face. I just put some of that on my lips and I wait for it to dry. Then next, you want to use a lip primer. This will provide a nice smooth canvas for your lipstick. Um, the lip primer, this is a product, uh, it's e.l.f. lip primer. e.l.f. makes really good products for a very reasonable price. You can get them at Target or you can get their products on Amazon. So this is a lip primer, it's just kind of like a lipstick. Um, it's white and it goes on white. And you're, after you put it on, you just want to make sure you wait for it to dry before you put your lipstick on. Then after that, you can use a lip pencil. Um, you might want to use a little darker of a shade of pencil than what your lipstick is going to be, or they, you can get them to match both same color. Um, this is a tip. It's a little thicker than maybe the tip of a pencil, but lip liners are kind of waxy, I guess you could say. So 
you just want to line your lips and it's very easy to line them because where it's it's a waxy consistency it's not going to slide outside the contour of your lips so when i use lip liner i just do the outside of my lips and then i fill the whole thing in with the lip liner that will help your lipstick to stay on longer and then finally you just want to apply your lipstick and then after that you could put a little gloss on if you want um, they also have, now nude lips are very popular these days so they also have products called lip tints and they just give your lip a very subtle wash of color um, they also actually have lipsticks that the color is nude and that just lets your own lip color shine right on through um, on the next episode we are going to be talking about mascara and eyeshadow so have fun with it Coming up next, we have Dr. Joe. I'm here with Dr. Joseph DeMarco. Dr. Joe, it's great to see you. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, it's funny, the last time you were here, you were telling me that besides the fact that you're a chiropractor, you were also a competitive bodybuilder for 20 years. Yeah, I was for 20 years from about... Uh, <laughs> 89 to the last time I did a contest was uh, 2009. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. amazing. Well, with that in mind, I had some questions on strength training. So I thought you would be the perfect person for me to interrogate. Sure. <laughs> um, I've been reading more and more about the importance of strength training for people over 50, almost to the point where they're saying that strength training is more important than cardio for the older population. So number one, can you explain to us the difference between strength training and cardio training and then number two you know give us your thoughts on what you think about the importance of strength training for the over 50 crowd sure so cardio training is usually an activity that someone's going to perform for more than 20 minutes because it takes about 20 minutes for your body to start getting into its fat burning systems mm -hmm. of the body for energy and so usually it's an activity that you do for at least 20 minutes so you could think of cardio as being something like walking, running, riding a bike, something like that, mm -hmm. where your heart rate's getting elevated and you're, you know, you're getting into a little bit of a sweat. Mm -hmm. uh, strength training is, is basically taking uh, normal ranges of motion but adding resistance to, to it. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, this is a normal range of motion. I can put my arms over my head. Uh, strength training would just be a simple matter of adding a little resistance to, to that motion. So it's to help build up uh, muscle tissue. Okay. So, and as far, so as far as um, the importance, um, yes, that, that is, a, that, that is uh, something that strength training is very important. I feel that strength training actually for the over 50 crowd is actually more important than the cardio training. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and unfortunately, uh, people over 50 uh, or as we get older, they uh, do less and less strength training. And, and um, if anything, if they do exercise, they tend to just do some cardio, which isn't, uh, isn't going to help everything that they need to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So by doing the strength training, they're increasing their, well, strength actually, but, but their muscles, which helps people to like do the normal things like go up and down steps or because once you become sedentary and you're losing your muscle mass, those types of things like even bending over to pick something up become more difficult to do. Right, so you know, most adults, if you're over 35 or 40, if you're sedentary, you're losing about half a pound of lean body mass every year which doesn't sound like a lot, but over 20, 25 years, that's 10, 15 pounds of lean muscle. And usually it's being replaced by body fat. So here you are, you could be 160 pounds when you were 30, and now you're, you could be 160 pounds when you're 60, but it's not the same composition of body mass. You have more fat, less muscle. Yeah. And so because of that, because we just naturally lose lean body mass as we get older, you have to offset that. And the only way you can offset it is by incorporating some type of strength training into your uh, workout program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so today we're going to be doing a couple of exercises um, and we're going to be working on the upper body. So you have um, a, like a big rubber band there. What is that for? So this is just a what they call like an exercise band or a resistance band. Mm -hmm. um, they're very common. You can get these in different strengths, so you can you can buy it so that it's very easy to use. Uh, some a little more uh, 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 a tighter band, so it's a little more resistance. Mm -hmm. You can pick these up online. They're very inexpensive, and you know, two three bands to have around your house is a great way to to get some strength training in. You know, mm -hmm. a big 
A big problem with strength training is when you, when you mention strength training to the general population, uh, you have to remember the general population, especially over 40 or over 50, they do not exercise. So if you tell someone, someone comes into my office that's a 70 year old uh, individual who has never exercised and I tell them, I think you should do some strength training. They have these visions of like, Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> slamming weights down in the gym. They have this like they, they have this wrong Wanna vision. So of course no one wants to do it. Yeah. But but when but all when we're saying you should be doing strength training, all we're talking about, or all I'm talking about is just going through some basic ranges of motion and adding some simple resistance to it. Yeah. And that's all you need to do to increase or at least maintain your 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 muscular um, strength and the in your muscle mass to prevent injuries as we get older. Okay. Now, these resistance bands, um, I've seen like at the, when you go to the physical therapist, they give you these brightly colored bands. They're not a, they're more flat kind right, of. Yeah. Is that the same thing it's as the, the same resistance thing. band? I mean, these are nice if you can find something like this online because they have handles. I like the idea that you can hold on to the handles. Sure. Those flat bands are fine. The, the different colors usually represent. Um, the, 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 the tension on it. Okay. So like this is a red band. You could, you know, if, like I said, you could buy a set of three. They may give you a yellow, green, and red. Yep. Whereas the red's the most, uh, the strongest band. The yellow might be the weakest band. So it's good to have two or three because certain exercises, you need a little less resistance, mm -hmm. you know. So it's good to have, but the, the flat bands that you see like at a PT office, that's all they are. They're just resistance bands that don't have handles. You can use those. Those are fine to use too if you have those. Okay. So if someone had never done strength training before, what what color would you suggest they start with the lightest color of these resistance Yeah, well, bands? I mean, all the companies, it's all, there's no set, like, it's not always, like, yellow's always the easiest band oh, type okay. of thing, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but when you when you buy them, they'll usually give you three or four or whatever, and, and they'll tell you, you know, which, they'll tell you when you buy it from the, the place, which is the easiest band to use. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so there's no, but yeah, you should, you should start off with, you know, it's, it's, all, it's not a matter of, resistance is just, you just need a little resistance, you know, you don't want to start off. Um, with 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 exercising, you know, we're not looking to just find a resistance that I can only do three or four repetitions. I want to be able to do fifteen or even twenty repetitions. Uh, so I just want a little bit of resistance. You know, sure. that's why a band is good. Uh, just a couple water bottles are great. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything just to add just a little bit of resistance so that the muscles are working. Mm -hmm. Now I have here. This is your um, typical. Uh, weights. These are three pound weights. Now these, um, you can get a pair of them for anywhere from 10 to $12. So if you were using this kind of weight and you were just starting off, you'd never done training before, would you start with maybe a one pound weight, do you think? Or I mean, some people may need to, you know, they, yeah. I know they sell them from one, they sell one pound is two pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, um, it, you know, depending on your body size, it has a lot to do with it. You know, a hundred pound individual, um, or a 150 pound individual. I mean, you know, you know so it's just, um, it's just a matter of, of, of your size and how much you know, strength mm -hmm. you have. But yeah, I mean, I would start off very light, if, especially if you've never exercised. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that deters people sometimes from doing strength training is not just, as I mentioned, about what they picture it to be, but also they start and they, and they over, it's like overkill. They, they get too aggressive right yeah. away yeah. and they start waking up sore in the morning and before they know it, a couple of weeks go by and they're like, this is crazy. I'm like so sore and achy yeah. and they overdo yeah. it. Yeah. So I always recommend start off very, very light, very light resistance. Um, you know, a little muscle soreness is okay, but if you're waking up really sore every day, you're probably overdoing it. You know, okay. that's not really the goal to be, you know, so you can't get out of bed in the morning. Yeah. So, so you want just enough resistance that you could do, let's say, maybe 10 reps as even opposed 15, to even, even 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. High reps. So if you had something that was too heavy and you could only do two or three reps, that's you don't yeah. want that. Yeah. If okay. you grab a band and, and you want to do a shoulder press and, and you can only go about five or six times before you start doing this type of stuff, you know, drop the resistance down. It's too heavy. Okay. It's too much, you know. So. Okay. So if you don't want to spend money on any of this uh, equipment... Here I have um, a water bottle that I fill with sand. This is two pounds, so there you go. And here I have just a regular water bottle with water in it. This is one pound. Then here I have a soup can. This is about one and a half pounds. So, you know, don't ever say to me, Mrs. Magoo, I can't exercise because I just can't afford the equipment. There's no excuse. You can get creative. Okay. Now, also, you have a YouTube channel, and 
you demonstrate all different kinds of exercises. Do you have strength training exercises on your YouTube channel? I do. We have we have videos that are for um, fixing injuries, and then we have other videos um, that we demonstrate exercises. We have some videos where we um, explain what exercises not to do that, that can oh. cause injuries, things like that. So yeah, we, we, we try to I try to give like a good, a, a wide variety of different videos on our channel. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the name of the channel for people to go to? And can you spell it for us? Yeah, it's actually, if you go to YouTube, um, so if you type in, you know, youtube.com and then you go backslash and it's Okra Med Health. So it's O-C-R-A-M-E-D. It's actually just tobacco spelled backwards okay. and, and health. So Okra Med, Med Health. health. Yep. Okay. And, you know, when you get there, there's, there's about a, I think we have about right now about 150 different videos oh on the channel. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. Um, and these videos are available to everyone, not just Dr. Joe's patients. So check it out. Dr. Joe, are you ready to exercise? Sure. Let's go. <laughs> okay, Dr. Joe, why don't you demonstrate the resistance band? Maybe just give us one exercise to do with that so people can sure. see how to use it. So a good exercise to do, um, getting talking about strength training and about um, you know building some muscle, but also uh, strength training is great for increasing bone density because oh. bones uh, will also weaken with inactivity. And strength training, by putting f uh, stress down on a bone, it helps strengthen the bone. There's a lot of research that shows that strength training increases bone density. So this exercise I'm gonna show you is a, is a real good exercise uh, for your, your, your shoulders and your triceps, and the, which are the muscles of the back of the arm. But because we're gonna be uh, performing a shoulder press where I'm gonna be pressing up, the resistance is gonna be coming down on my entire body, mm -hmm. which is gonna be good for my spine. It's mm -hmm. gonna be good for my entire body for, the, for, for uh, building some uh, increased density in my bones. You know, that's really great to know. I didn't know that because you figure if your bones are denser, when you fall down, you're not going to break your hip. I mean, it, your bones Absolutely. won't that's, break that's so the, easily. That's so part of the importance of, of strength that's training is, biggie, uh, for yeah. the elderly is that, sure. the, um, you know, as we get older, the, uh, the, the uh, bones lose mineralization. We have, you know, osteopenia, which turns into osteoporosis. And, you know, that makes it much easier to fracture a hip. So increasing some resistance training and increasing some of that pressure on the bones, strengthen the bones. Okay. Um, so anyways, all you need to do, and you can do this sitting, you could, be, you, could, uh, you could sit on top of the band. I'm standing, so I'm gonna actually step on the band like this. Okay, so people who have balance issues, you can do these exercises You can do these, you can do these sitting, and there's nothing wrong with doing strength training sitting, you know, in the seated position, okay. it's fine. So I'm just stepping on the uh, band, and I'm just gonna bring the, uh, the handles up to my shoulder. Now you notice I have the band behind my arms, so I don't want it like this where I'm gonna get in, where they're in the way, so I'm putting it behind. Mm -hmm. And all I'm gonna do from this position is I'm just gonna press straight overhead, just like that. So, like I said, I have resistance now coming down on my entire body. I'm actually, um, I'm not just using my arms, but in this position, I have pressure coming down on my spine, on my hips, on my knees, so this is a great exercise just to add uh, resistance for your entire body on both sure. the muscles and the bones. Sure. So from this position, I'm just pressing up and I'm just coming down to about uh, a little bit below my ears and then I'm pressing back up. So I wanna be doing a resistance where I would like to get at least 15 repetitions and then do this three times. So three sets of 15 repetitions. Oh, okay. Now if I only go four or five times and I, my arms start and your arms start shaking as you're going up, the resistance band is too heavy, it's too strong. Oh, so okay. drop down to a, a lighter band. But you, it's good to do something like that for three sets. So do 15 repetitions, rest about 60 seconds, then do another set of 15 repetitions, rest for 60 seconds, and then do your final set. And you want to make sure your foot doesn't slip while you've got the band Absolutely. I mean, you know, once, <laughs> once you're standing on this thing, it isn't going anywhere. But once again, you could easily do this um, with, that, with, the, with the dumbbells, with the water bottles, with the cans of soup. You can do it standing. You can do it seated. So yep. okay. and, it's a, and it's just a good overall exercise. Okay. So. Now, before we go on, I wanted to talk to about proper breathing technique. You know, sometimes I notice when I'm exercising, I find myself holding my breath yeah, and I know that do. is wrong, wrong, wrong. Right? Right. Yeah. A lot of people, <laughs> that's a big mistake. They, they do their exercises and then through their whole set of 15 repetitions, they haven't, they don't breathe once. I know. And then I they know. get lightheaded and, and, you know, so, so the, 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 the um, when it comes to breathing and exercise, Usually at the point when you're exerting yourself, you should be breathing out. So if I was doing that shoulder press, the exertion is here. I'm actually pressing the weight, so I'm exerting myself. So that's the point where I'm gonna breathe out. And then as I lower the weight, 
I'm going to breathe in. Okay. So it, whatever the motion is, the motion of the point where you're exerting yourself, you're okay. breathing out. Okay. So it's important to remember that to, to breathe when you're exercising. Yeah, because yeah. it's kind of like not doing you any good if you're holding your breath. No, it's not. Yeah. And like I said, usually what's going to happen is you're going to get lightheaded, you can pass out, you've got you to be careful. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Um, now, we'll do the rest of the exercise. We'll just use the regular three-pound weights. Sure. Now, a three-pound weight for you must be like child's play. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably equivalent to me picking up a penny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the first exercise you got? Well, um, how, about, how about for the underarm jigglies? Do we have one for that? Sure, yeah, we could do that. That would be the tricep muscles, which, um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a muscle that if you don't exercise it, the reason you mentioned about the underarm jigglies is because it's a, a muscle that, you know, in our day-to-day -day activities, we, it probably doesn't, you know, get used a whole lot unless you specifically exercise it, it gets flabby. Yeah. So it's good to do some exercises. So we're just going to take these three pounds. Wait, oh, whoa, that's heavy there. <laughs> Katie, what are you doing? All right, well, I think I can manage with these. So, um, so a good exercise I was for that. <laughs> so okay. the tricep muscle is a muscle that extends the elbow this way, like that. Okay. Uh -huh. So a good way to exercise is you can do it with two arms at the same time, or you can do one at a time. But if I was going to do two together, I'm going to bend my knees a little bit, uh -huh. and I'm going to actually almost stick my buttocks out and have my back flat. So I'm in this position. So in this okay. position, this is actually a very strong position for your lower back. Okay. Uh, from this position with the buttocks out and the back flat and yeah. my knees bent, it's a safe position. And I'm going to have my elbows right up against my side holding the weights. And then the motion would just be extending the, um, the, the elbows out and squeezing those tricep muscles. You can, you can actually go nice and slow and do like a two count, like 1,001, 1,002, and then bend the elbows back. Okay. And then extend out. Now, the, the couple things on this, you notice my elbows aren't leaving the sides of my body. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this. I'm not move the elbows. I'm gonna. I have them glued by my side, okay. and my elbows are at 90 degrees. I'm gonna extend them, and then I'm gonna come back to 90 degrees. Okay. So that's that's kind of the couple key points in that. You know, you don't once your elbows are by your side, you leave them there, and the the exercise is just through the elbow joint, okay. and that's gonna work the back. Do you want to give it a try? Sure. So you can do one at a time, or you can do okay. both. Like, for example, you may want to do if you if you're a little unsteady. You can have someone, they can put their hand on a table like this uh -huh. and then just do one arm at a time. Oh, you know, okay. You know, yep. if you want it, if you just, have a balance sure. issue, you can hold on to something and just do one arm at a time or you can do both together like I just showed you. Okay, I'll just do both together okay. to even it out. Okay, so I, I bend my So a little bit knees, of a bend in the knees, yep. I stick my butt out. Yep, so your back is nice and flat. That's a good position. Is it flat right now? Yeah, it's good. Yep. Okay. And then bring your elbows by your side. Oh, by my side. Like oh, that. Perfect. okay. Yep. So like they're in an L shape. Yep. Okay. And then all we're going to do is extend the arms. Perfect. One. So you can do that one arm at a time, or you can do both together, you know, with, the, with what okay. you're doing. Yep, just like that. And perfect. Goodbye, Jigglies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's perfect. Like, okay. That, that's good. That was a good, you know, and, and, you know, you should really be feeling... Um, you know, the, the through here. Yeah. And yeah. once again, you know, if you can only do six, seven, eight and you start cramping in your tricep, like it starts to cramp, it starts to shake, mm -hmm. you know, go down to two pound weights. You okay. know, you don't have to do three pound weights, you know, because this is, again, this is an exercise. I would rather see you do three sets of 15 repetitions. Three sets of 15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good to do things in three sets. Okay. You know, you do a set, you rest a little bit, and then you do another set. And in each set, you should be a little more fatigued. You know, if you just do one set, your muscles don't get as much out of it. It's good to do things in, say, th sets of threes. Because by the third set, your muscles should be really fatigued. And that's how we strengthen our muscles, by fatiguing our muscles. Oh, okay. So. That's what's makes them stronger. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. All right. So you want to show another one? Um, yeah. So... Um, this is, this is, you know, people a lot of times ask, and I'm going to just grab these, this band real quick because I want to uh, just show, but people a lot of times ask about posture muscles. So a way, uh, the posture muscles are the muscles, say, between your shoulder blades here, mm -hmm. and a good way to strengthen them is to be bringing, pulling a resistance in pulling your elbows back. Okay. So I'm not going to show you with this because we, we don't have a place to set up, but a lot of times I'll take the resistance band and I'll hook it on a doorknob so okay. that it's, 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 it's at this position. I'll be standing away from the door with my arms out straight. Okay. I keep my chest up, I keep uh, my shoulders back, and I pull my elbows back and squeeze my shoulder blades together. And that works those posture muscles. And that's a big thing for people over 50. You know, people start hunching forward, their posture, and that's because their posture muscles get weak. Oh, okay. And once again, you know, um, it's just a matter of strengthening those, those muscles that we don't use on a regular basis. So I'll just stand there with the resistance band against the doorknob, and I'll pull back and squeeze 
three sets of 15. Um, if you don't have uh, a band or you have, you know, you're, like today we don't have a place to hook this, you can do the same exercise uh, with the dumbbells. And you can, it's the setup is actually the same as we just did for the tricep. I'm actually going to be in the same position. Knees bent, buttocks out, the back is flat. And, I can, and I'm going to let the, the weights this time though dangle in front. So instead of having them by my side, okay. they're dangling. I got the knees bent. I'm in a nice good posture. And I'm just going to actually think of pulling the weights up towards my hips. So oh, I'm, I'm okay. still squeezing those shoulder blades together. So instead of doing it this way, I, I'm doing it in this way. This okay. way. Okay. And the same thing, you just squeeze up and then let it come down nice and controlled. Okay. As far as breathing goes, this is a pull exercise. This is a push exercise. So we're breathing out as we're pushing up. So we're going Phew. on this exercise, the exertions as I'm pulling. So that's when I'm breathing out. I'm going to breathe out right here. <laughs> and then I'll breathe in, breathe in and then breathe out. <laughs> Okay. Just like that. So if you want to try it, it's the same exact okay. position that we just did for the triceps. Yeah. But this time, let the weights dangle and then pull back. Okay. Just turn around one second. I just want to sh on the camera for people yeah. to see you. These are your posture muscles right here? And, and lower. And lower all yeah, the way right down here? There. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, for the most part, I mean, those are muscles that keep your shoulder blades back. So you it know, keeps good us good posture. We yeah. keep those those muscles back. You yeah, know, I know because a lot of times you see older people and they really are quite hunched over. Yeah. Okay. So, so same thing. Bent, but yep, out, like that. Back flat. Yep. And then pull the elbows. Think of pulling the weights back towards your hips. Yep. Okay. So even, why even, breathe out? Yep. <sighs> yep. And even come back a little bit. I'm going to come with you here. A little bit more like that. Perfect. <sighs> Perfect. <sighs> yep. Now look at how straight I'm standing. <laughs> Amazing! <Yep. laughs> well, Dr. Joe, thank you so much for educating us on strength training and showing us those exercises. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Well, my office is over at the Manchester Athletic Club in Manchester. Mm -hmm. uh, number is 978-525-3800. And uh, we're open Monday through Friday all week long. Okay. So this time we worked on uh, upper body strength. So the next time you come back, we'll do the lower body. Sure. We can do lower body next time. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, coming up next, some tips on how to get a good night's sleep. That Dr. Joe has a great sense of humor, but I guess you have to to come on this show. You know, just one more point about the strength training. Dr. Joe recommends that you do strength training two to three times a week. And now let's talk about some tips for getting a good night's sleep. You know, number one, you want to try and go to bed at the same time every night. This will keep your circadian rhythms normal. And your circadian rhythms, they control your sleep patterns. So if you go to bed at a different time every night, it disrupts the flow of the circadian rhythm. So then what happens is when it's time for you to be awake, you're going to be sleepy. And then when it's time for you to go to bed, you're going to be awake. Um, also, the National Sleep Foundation recommends that you have the temperature in your bedroom set at between 60 and 67 degrees. Um, also, don't do any exercises that will elevate your heart rate like two hours before you go to bed. Because you know, exercising gives you energy, it kind of wakes you up. So you want to give your body a little time to chill before it's time to go to sleep. Um, do not eat a heavy meal before you go to sleep. Um, that will, could cause acid reflux, which makes it very uncomfortable and will definitely disrupt your sleep. Uh, little small snacks are okay, but you know, don't um, have a Big Mac with supersized fries and think you're going to get a good night's sleep. Um, I neglected to mention at the top of sleeping tips, um, this is a two-part segment. There was just too much information to try and squeeze it all into one segment. So part two we'll have on the next episode. So sleeping, if you want to go to sleep, you have to simulate darkness. You need darkness to sleep. So you want to have a good set of shades. You want to make sure they're pulled down. Um, you can also get a sleep mask. Hi, Beulah. Um, that Beulah is modeling for you there. Those, the sleep masks you can get at the dollar store, and those are great because they really block a lot of the light. Um, you also want to get computers, cell phones, tablets. Put those all away from your bed because they all have that blue light, which can be distracting. Um, also, you can get they now have black pillowcases. And these are great because, there again, you're simulating darkness all around you. 
Another thing I find really helpful is magnesium. You know, 80% of the population has low magnesium levels, and low levels of magnesium causes trouble, is linked with uh, trouble sleeping and insomnia. You know, magnesium can help calm your body and your mind. Um, I personally use uh, a magnesium supplement. This is magnesium glycinate. Now, I like this, the glycinate, because it's very easy for your system to absorb it. Also, another great way to get magnesium in your system is if you like to take a nice hot bath before you go to bed, take a cup of Epsom salts and mix it in with your bath water because Epsom salts has magnesium in it, so that's a great way to get it into your system. Um, we also have magnesium oil. Um, this is great as well, too. I rub this on the soles of my feet, on the bottoms of my feet. Um, mostly every night. Um, if you want something to get into your system very quickly, rub it in on the soles of your feet. Um, this is great for leg cramps, and I know leg cramps keep people awake or wake you up. I used to have them, and, and this is wonderful. I have no problem since I've been using this. You can actually take the magnesium oil and rub it on the area wherever you get the cramps. Um, we also have lavender, lavender oil, calms your nervous system. Lavender oil is wonderful, plus it smells really nice. Um, you could put lavender, a few drops of lavender oil in a diffuser and have that running while you sleep at night. Um, you could put a few drops on a cotton ball and just inhale it for a little bit before you go to bed. Uh, or so, also, you could just put a dab of lavender under each nostril. A friend of mine does that, and she says she sleeps like a baby. So those are just a few tips. Now, uh, part two, we'll talk about um, tryptophan and melatonin. Those are two really important things, and there's a lot of information there. So we'll talk about that on the next episode. So I hope some of these tips will help you out, and you can get a good night's sleep. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Our quote of the day is, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't possibly live long enough to make them all yourself. Well, thanks everybody for spending some time with me today. I hope you like our new studios. And please don't forget to take the time to take care of you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.